my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. So today's video is my Sunday sewing catch up and we're on episode 27. I've got my trusty notebook in front of me with all of my notes so that I remember to include everything. Um, so my Sunday sewing catch ups if you're new is a video that I release every Sunday. Um, it's a roundup of what I've been getting up to in the week, sewing wise or crafting wise or making wise. Sometimes I share snippets of baking. I haven't been doing baking much recently. I have been doing sewing. Um, I've been dreaming up lots and lots of plans too. So quite often I include my sewing plans for the week. So today's video is going to be sharing things that I've sewn this week. Um, I've got a pattern and some fabric to talk about. Um, I've got a couple of, um, not necessarily challenges, but things that have cropped up that I thought were worth sharing with you. Um, I've got a YouTube channel that I wanted to mention, and I always finish with what my plans are uh, for the following week. Um, I always over plan. I've always got loads and loads of things that I want to sew up and I want to get busy making, and I don't always get around to doing them. But this week I did manage to get quite a bit of sewing done, which was great. So I'll start with what I'm wearing and actually what I'm wearing is one of the things that I got sewn up this week and I talked about this fabric in my last Sunday sewing catch up. It's a fabric, a Liberty fabric that was um, given to me as part of my ambassador role with Abercorn Fabrics and I wanted to turn it into the Friday Pattern Company Sage Brush Top and I've got the pattern here so I can show you in a second and I did manage to get it sewn up. And I've just paired it with my Tilly and the Buttons Bobby Pinafore at the moment, which is a bit of a shame because you can't see the ruffle, but I thought it went really nicely. So I have got that gorgeous sagebrush ruffle here, and then you've got the um, sort of little tie detail at the back. I'll put photos in of the blouse just so you can see what, it, what it looks like because it's quite tricky to show on camera. But this fabric is just beautiful. It's definitely more of a spring summer fabric but um, it's quite warm in my house, so I've just got it on with my bobby pinafore um, and tights as well. This was made as part of the Felicity Fabrics blog. Um, it's in a gorgeous baby pink um, needle cord. I love the bobby pinafore. It's got buttons all the way down. You've got a waistband. It's got deep pockets, which is great. And then it's got um, straps that cross over at the back. So that is what I'm wearing. Um, I'll just grab the pattern and then I can talk you through a couple of the features of the pattern. But it was a really enjoyable sew. I absolutely love Friday Pattern Company patterns. The instructions always really guide you through the sewing process really nicely. Um, they're really clear instructions as well and you've got lovely images to support you along the way. I've seen so many gorgeous versions of the sagebrush top and I've sewn this top up quite a few times before. So I knew it was a top that I would really enjoy sewing and I knew it was a top that I'd enjoy wearing as well. Um, it finishes with um, elastic casing on their sleeves and you've got this gorgeous volume on the sleeves as well as that beautiful ruffle that I showed as well. So here are the line drawings for the sage brush top. So you can see you've got those gorgeous voluminous sleeves that stop. Um, so there's my elbow, they stop just above the elbow. Um, and then you've got this beautiful ruffle. It's gathered ever so slightly on the front here. And then you've got a yoke piece here. You've got a yoke piece on the front. And then you finish the neckline with bias binding that um, fastens into this gorgeous little bow as well. And then you've got a really deep hem. It's quite a long top. I only had a metre of this fabric, which was quite wide. So I managed to squeeze it out of a metre. It does suggest just over, I think it's like 1.2 or 1.3 metres of fabric that it suggests. Um, but I always take off a little bit of the length because I find the sagebrush top is quite a long top. So I always take a couple of inches off and that means that I can squeeze it out of a meter, which is always great. So they describe the sagebrush top as an elegant and easy to sew blouse. It's a joy to make and wear and it really is a lovely, easy to sew blouse. It's designed for woven fabrics and looks great in breezy fabrics like a cotton voile as well as more structured fabrics like a crisp linen. I've also made it in a cotton poplin which makes the sleeves really stand out and um, which is a really lovely feature. The simple design of the top lends itself well to customisation. Sagebrush looks great tucked into something high-waisted. I think it goes really nicely with pinafore dresses as well although like I said at the beginning with a pinafore dress you can't see that beautiful ruffle that you've got across um, sort of the chest. Um, so I sewed up a size small. In terms of sizes, it comes in, in uh, sizes extra small up to 7x. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement of 32 to 33 inches, waist measurement of 24 to 25 inches and a hip measurement of 34 to 35 inches. And then a 7x is a bust measurement of 59 to 60 inches, 
a waist measurement of 52 to 53 inches and then a hip measurement of 62 to 63 inches. Um, this fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's a Tana lawn, so it's got a really lovely soft silky feel to it, almost like a cotton lawn. Um, and it's a Liberty print, which I absolutely love. Abercorn Fabrics have got 15% off their Liberty prints at the moment. So I'll link it down below if you want to go and check them out. And um, because I did get 15% off this beautiful fabric. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and it was a really enjoyable sew. So that's the first thing that I managed to got, get sewn up this week. Um, I've had quite a difficult week. Um, if you follow me over on Instagram, you'll have seen that sadly on Monday evening, my car got broken into whilst I was shopping. So I'd left work quite late. Um, I have quite late meetings on a Monday, so it means that I don't get home till about seven o'clock in the evening. Um, so I popped into the local supermarket to me just to get some sponges and washing up liquid for school because we'd run out. And then whilst I was in there, unfortunately, somebody broke into my car and stole my work laptop. So when I came out of the supermarket, my car window was all smashed. So I took in the police. Um, I went into the supermarket and they weren't particularly helpful, sadly. Um, but luckily, my in-laws live around the corner, so I could carefully drive my car around there. Um, called the police and obviously reported it, but I haven't got my laptop back. I didn't expect to get my laptop back. It was just a little bit of a shaky, horrible thing to have happen. Um, and the thing that really sort of upset me the most was, I guess I was there for work. I was buying some things for work. But what upset me the most was the fact that somebody must have watched me leave my car in the supermarket and pop inside. And then in that time, I was, must have only been in there for no more than 20 minutes. And in that time, they'd broken into my car and stolen something that I needed for my schoolwork. So it was a little bit of a horrible start to the week. Um, and then that meant that I didn't have my car because all the window at the front was all smashed. So we've been waiting for that to be fixed. So it's just been a bit of a tricky week. Um, it's left a really sort of uncomfortable feeling with me. Um, I haven't been back to the supermarket, partly because I haven't got a car, but it was seven o'clock in the evening. It wasn't super late. Um, and it's a supermarket that I've been to hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of times before. Um, and I just don't feel comfortable going to that supermarket now, especially when it's dark and on my own, which is a shame really. Um, so as a result, um, because I haven't had a laptop, it's meant that I haven't actually been able to do as much work at home as I would normally. So it's kind of been a blessing in disguise because it's meant that I could focus on my sewing and actually I've needed that as a distraction um, because it's not been a very happy week, sadly. So I have been able to sew up a little bit more than I would usually. So there's a couple of things that I've sewn up using this gorgeous cotton jersey fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. This was given to me in return for a blog post. So I'm not going to talk in detail about the pattern, but I will say that I sewed up some loungewear um, and I've tried it on and it's really comfortable and cozy. Um, once the blog is written, because I still need to write the blog and get some photos, and once it goes live on the Felicity Fabrics website, I'll be able to talk a bit more in detail about what I actually got sewn up. But this fabric feels so lovely and it's absolutely perfect. Um, for loungewear they've got it in different colors and I asked them to surprise me with what color this is almost like a salmon pink and I just absolutely love it it's really good quality um, so I sewed that up and I'm excited to get photos today and get that blog written up and then I had a little bit of the fabric left because um, when I'm um, sewing something up for a blog I do tend to stick or have a look at the pattern and buy the recommended um, fabric so I did ask for two meters but actually what I ended up sewing meant that I had a tiny bit of fabric left so I managed to squeeze out some baby clothes which I'm really excited about so we've got a couple of friends that have just had babies um, and they've both had baby girls and I sewed up some dresses which I shared a few weeks ago and I have gifted those dresses and they absolutely loved them and then I had a little bit of this fabric left so I used a couple of my favorite patterns I used the, uh, I was going to say sew over it, but it is part of the sew over it brand. The Poppy and Jazz Tangerine Trousers to sew up some gorgeous little trousers. There they are. They're super cute. They've got this gorgeous thick waistband and they're quite wide leg trousers actually. So I've sewn those up first and then I used the strawberry sweatshirt to make a matching sweatshirt to go with the trousers. How cute is that? absolutely adorable but my favorite thing about sewing up baby clothes is just how cute and tiny they look but i love how teeny tiny that little cuff is and how teeny tiny the little neck band is and the little band at the bottom as well reminds me almost of a um like south bank sweater but a baby version of a south bank sweater 
So our friend has got gorgeous little um, sort of sweatshirts and then some little joggers um, or little trousers to go with it. And then I had just enough fabric left to make um, a Patterns for Pirate uh, teeny beanie hat. So I've just done the tie knot teeny beanie hat and that is just super cute as well. So I'm really excited. I'm going to send that off in the post tomorrow. I didn't want to send it until I'd shared it in this video and then I'm going to send it off to them. We got to meet um, gorgeous little baby um, over Christmas so I can't wait to send these off to her. Um, I think she'll look really cute in those. Um, and then the other thing that I've got sewn up, there's two more things to talk about actually. I'm just going to grab the next thing. Um, it was a pattern that I talked about getting it cut out, but I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get it sewn up. But with everything that happened with my car, I actually ended up having a bit more time to sew and I really needed it. I really needed the distraction last week. So I used this gorgeous wool fabric that I got from um, Rainbow Fabrics. If they've got any left, I think last time I checked they did have just love the colours there's like a lilac colour and a mint green white grey and black it's so lovely and soft and I had plans to turn this into the sew over it Jessie Cotigan and I've got the pattern so I can share that with you I've got the pictures to show you and I did manage to get it sewn up which I'm really pleased with so I'll pop it on so you can see what it looks like I'm not sure if it will go with what I'm wearing but at least you'll be able to see what it looks like and I'm really, really pleased that I got this sewn up because I think it's going to be great for my school wardrobe. Um, especially at the moment with the weather being a little bit chilly, I definitely need those extra layers of little jackets and jumpers and cardigans. So I think this is going to be great and nice and snuggly as well um, to wear at work. So this is what it looks like. I'm really, really pleased with my pattern matching at the front. That was completely accidental. I didn't try and do pattern matching. It's just the way that I managed to cut out the front pieces and the back pieces. So I'm really pleased with that. It matches up really nicely on the front. I just need to press the facing a little bit more. I did understitch it, but it does keep uh, keeping forward. Um, it's got lovely deep pockets, which you need. It's meant to be oversized so that you can wear jumpers underneath. And I really like that feel of it being oversized. It's got a dropped shoulder. I didn't do any pattern matching on the sleeves at all. You can see that. And then it's got this gorgeous like collar detail that goes all the way around the back. It's really snuggly. And I think it's going to really help to keep me nice and warm when I'm wearing it to work. I'll just grab the pattern so I can talk to you about it. So here is the pattern. It's called the Jessie Cotigan. Um, it's meant to be really roomy and oversized and you can make it in a range of fabrics. They recommend medium weight woven fabrics like a boiled wool, melton or twill crepe. Alternatively, you can use a medium weight knit fabric with some drape. So knit fabrics with wool content work well for this style. And I've actually got some boucle fabric that I'm planning to cut another one of these out. When I was sewing it up, I'd forgotten how straightforward it is to sew up. Um, in terms of sizes, they've got two size bundings for the Jessie Cotigan. So you, it comes in sizes UK 6 to 30, and that's split to a UK 6 to 20, which is a B cup measurement, and then 18 to 30, which is a D cup. Um, for a UK size 6, it's a 31 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement, and 34 inch hip measurement. And then for a UK 30, it's a bust measurement of 57 inches, a waist measurement of 50 inches, and then a hip measurement of 60 inches. Um, I really enjoyed sewing it up. It came together really nicely. And then these are the line drawings, so you can see what it looks like. So it's got this lovely sort of cuff detail on the sleeves. You've got this lovely collar detail that comes down. So you can see here on mine, it's slightly peeping through at the bottom. I just need to press it ever so slightly. Um, just give it another really good press. Um, but it's meant to be really snuggly and really oversized and just an extra layer to keep you nice and cosy and warm. So I'm really pleased with how this has turned out and I'm really delighted that I managed to get it sewn up this week as well. Like I said, I think it's really going to add to my winter wardrobe just as an extra layer for keeping me nice and snuggly and warm. And actually, I do think it goes ever so slightly with what I'm wearing because of that lilac colour and the um, sort of mint green. I think it goes with that baby pink. Um, so I'm definitely going to wear it to work tomorrow. And then the final thing that I've been sewing is something a little bit different to what I normally do. But I've been feeling really inspired to use up my fabric scraps. And a couple of months ago, I talked about um, sort of using my fabric scraps to sew something inspired by the Rainbow Fish, which is a picture book that we use at school. It's all about a rainbow fish that's got sparkly scales 
um, and the rainbow fish doesn't want to share the sparkly scales to begin with but then slowly they start to realize that it would be really kind to share a couple of sparkly scales um, and the rainbow fish starts off being a bit grumpy in the story but then they learn that friends make you feel nice and happy um, and sharing makes you feel really happy too and eventually the rainbow fish starts to gift um, some of their scales leaving some sparkly scales for themselves as well it's a book that we use at school and it's a book that I really enjoy sharing with the children as well so I've been feeling really inspired and I'd divided up my or I'd gone through my fabric scraps and got all of like the blues and the greens and the purples um, all the different scraps that were those kind of colours and I was going to um, sort of cut them out um, or you know reshape them so it was easier to sew, sew them together and then create some um, kind of garment using those scraps. Last night for whatever reason I felt incredibly inspired and I started piecing all of those scraps together and I've created a piece of fabric that is about I think it's about a meter and a half wide and a meter and a half long so it's quite a square piece of fabric now that I've created and I have got a long roll of that fabric here so what I decided to do was I used my um, kitchen table, which is quite a long kitchen table, um, and I pieced all the um, bits of fabric. And I saw a YouTube video, I'll see if I can find it, and I'll link it down below if I can find it, um, where somebody did that with their fabric scraps, and they actually ironed them onto interfacing. So I did that, I ironed all of the fabric scraps, which I'd laid them out onto interfacing, ironed them onto the interfacing so they all stuck down. Um, and then I put a layer of wadding underneath, clipped it all together, checked that I was happy with how it looked. And then I decided on a piece of fabric that I was going to put on the bottom. So I've got a layer for the inside of whatever I decide to use this fabric for. And I think I'm going to use it to sew up a coat. So then I had some gingham fabric, which I really wanted to use. And I chose this sort of mint coloured gingham fabric. I think I got it from Sew Me Sunshine or Hey So Sister, I can't remember. I'll link it in the description below if they've got any of this left um, and then if I can carefully hold it up I have started quilting all of that together just by doing straight lines although I say straight lines they're a bit wibbly wobbly it's all clipped together at the moment and I've only managed to quilt together about 35 centimeters and that's taken me over an hour to do that just sewing those straight lines so I'll try and hold it up and I'll put some pictures in of what the fabric looks like but this is all of the fabric pieced together at the moment and you can see if I bring it closer that I've started doing the lines all the way down to quilt it together. So I've been going top to bottom and then I'm going to spin it round and then I'll go this way down with the lines too and then I will end up with a piece of um, fabric that's been quilted together using all of the different scraps that I've got from all the different um, projects that I've sewn up over the last couple of years. And it's all sort of rainbow fish coloured fabrics that go together. And then what I started to do, if I can find a piece, I'm going to have to unravel it ever so slightly to, to find it for you. Um, but I've started, I'm going to bring it a bit closer so I can show you, putting on top of my quilted sections um, some rose gold sequin fabric that I've got to make the shiny scales of the rainbow fish. And then I've been using some um, sort of blue sparkly tool fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. And I've been using that to represent the sparkly scales from the rainbow fish. So if I stand up, you'll hopefully be able to see. There's the rose gold sequins, if you can see, and it just slightly shimmers. And then this is the tool fabric. So you can just see it starts to slowly, um, ever so slightly shimmer. And then the back of it, because I've got that gorgeous um, gingham, you can just see the lines. You can see how wibbly wobbly the lines are. It's my first time ever doing anything like this, but hopefully it will turn out really good. And then the idea once I've got my big patch of quilted fabric, so that's what it looks like. That's a small snippet of what it looks like. Once I've got my uh, quilted fabric, then I'm going to use it to sew up a coat. Now, I'm not quite sure which pattern I'll use because I've got quite a few coat patterns that would work really well for quilted fabric. And there's a new pattern that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, I spent about two hours piecing all of the or laying out all of my scrap fabrics and working out colours and, and sort of standing on a chair to check that I liked the composition of how I've laid all my scraps. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's turning out at the moment. This is going to be an ongoing project because it took me two hours to work out how to lay all the um, fabric pieces and then I had to sort of iron them all together. And then it took me a couple of hours this morning to clip 
the wadding in between and then the um, gingham fabric and then it's taken me an hour to sew about 35 centimeters of the quilting lines and then I need to go the other way as well so I think it's going to take me a very long time to get this fabric sewn together but I'm really excited about having um sort of a coat or something made using some quilting fabric that I've used all of those scraps I mean this is what it looks like so far I just think it's going to look so fun as a garment and then using those you can just see the sparkly sequins using those sequins uh, to create the sparkly aspect of the rainbow fishes scales I think it's going to be really fun as well I'm definitely going to add I think onto the coat some patch pockets and then I was speaking to my husband about this because I want to wear it to work and I'll read the story the rainbow fish and talk to the children about the inspiration behind the little coat slash jacket that I transform um, using this fabric I want to put some uh, rainbow fish scales in my pocket so that I can give them out to the children because I think they'll really enjoy that I've really enjoyed piecing this together and I'm really enjoying the quilting process. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm learning along the way and it's been super fun so far. And I'm really, really excited to see how it turns out. Um, so that's been an un unexpected project for this week. And it's going to be a project that I continue sewing up over the next couple of weeks. And then I have to decide which pattern to use as well. So I just thought I'd share my process so far with that and I'll keep you updated in my vlogs as to how I'm getting on with that. And then I've got some fabric to share with you. So um, I was really inspired by the Fabric Godmother. They do their um, dream wardrobe, I always forget the name of it. They do their dream wardrobe sewing subscription boxes, which I've had a couple of times, but then I stopped because they get you get a pattern included in it and I was just finding that I had far too many patterns this is something that I talk about all of the time I don't need any more patterns so I stopped getting the dream wardrobe box but I do love it when Josie shares what's in the box because if I like what she's sharing quite often the fabric and the pattern they've got on the website so I can go ahead and order the bits and bobs if I want to make up whatever pattern it is that came in the box what I also found with the dream wardrobe boxes is I actually ended up with a, a couple of duplicate patterns, which you can send back and then you get the money credited to your account and you can buy something else on their website. Um, but I really like the idea of watching the unboxing on Instagram. And then if I feel inspired and they still got some of the beautiful fabric, then I can go and get it myself. So the latest Dream Wardrobe box, I felt really inspired. JC made the most gorgeous quilted jacket and I seem to be really loving quilt jackets at the moment it's all I seem to be talking about it's all I seem to be looking at and doing research um, and the pattern and the fabric that were included in the box was the Atelier Skemet um, Absolute jacket I have never sewn um, Atelier, um, yeah, Atelier Skemet patterns hopefully I'm saying that correctly I haven't sewn their patterns before I've seen them around I know quite a few people that have sewn with them um, and I really love the look of this pattern so it's a half jacket, half cardigan, um, and it says this model will be the ideal alley for mid-season. Combined with a chic fabric, it will dress up the most basic of t-shirts in no time. Unlined, this model adopts a bordered finish all around. It offers two different lengths, a large patch pocket, two neckline shapes, and an optional half flat collar. Composed of few pieces, it's a quick and easy to sew model. Um, and then Josie shared it. Um, it had been made up in this gorgeous floral quilting which is absolutely beautiful and it's double sided to the quilting. Um, so you've got this beautiful, it's actually quite similar to this, sort of green, baby pink. There's some sort of um, bronzy colored flowers there as well. And then the other side is slightly smaller, more ditzy florals. The jacket that was sewn up is absolutely gorgeous. And then it was finished with this beautiful sage green bias binding. Um, and it just looks absolutely beautiful. If I can find an image of it, if Josie shared it on the grid, then I'll pop it in so you can see what it looks like. But I felt instantly inspired. This fabric and the pattern was bought over Christmas. I'm still sticking with my, my um, sort of fabric buying ban. I haven't bought any fabric in January. This just took a really long time to arrive in the post. I really love the look of this style with this really plain neckline and that's the one that's finished with the bias binding I think it's absolutely gorgeous and then I would add these lovely deep pockets as well and then if this turns out really nicely then I might use the same pattern to sew up my quilting fabric that I'm creating using all the fabric scraps that I've got this comes in sizes uh, UK 6 to UK 20 
Um, so in terms of bust measurement for a UK 6, it's 31.5 inches for a bust measurement, 24.4 inches for a waist measurement and 33.8 inches for a hip measurement. And then for a UK 20, it's a 45.3 inch bust measurement, 38.2 inch waist measurement and then 47.6 inch hip measurement. Um, in terms of fabric, they recommend medium to heavyweight fabrics like a um, jacquard, woolen fabric, quilted cotton, etc. with a certain stiffness and not too flowing uh, with 0-10% to maximum um, stretch factor. This is a French pattern company. Um, I really love the aesthetic of their pattern um, sort of envelopes. It's got a little bit of Velcro. There's an, a section for your notes if you want to and then inside... Um, you've got the little booklet, it's written in French, but then you've also got the English instructions underneath. So I'm really looking forward to trying this pattern. Uh, please let me know if you've used the Telia Schemic patterns before and what your experience of them was. And if you've sewn up this, um, what's it called, absolute jacket, please let me know if you've got an experience, any experiences of sewing up this pattern. But I'm quite excited about tackling this too. I seem to be getting quite a collection of quilting fabric in my stash. But I just want really cosy things at the moment, which is why I was drawn to this. And the version that's been sewn up just looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm quite excited about trying that one out as well. And then the next thing that I wanted to share was somebody that I've discovered over on YouTube. And it's somebody called Adam underscore sews. He takes part in the hashtag Friday sews videos. And I've been really enjoying watching those vlogs um, whilst I've been sewing. Over on Adam's Instagram page, he shares sewing, quilting, and then also these beautiful sort of little um, felted animals. So I think he sews them out of felt and then he hand paints them. And the detail is absolutely exquisite. They look almost lifelike. They're incredible. Um, there's a gorgeous sort of um, boxer dog that he's um, sort of sewn up using felt and painted. And then there's a really cute goat as well. Um, and I've just found it quite an inspiring Instagram page to look at, especially those gorgeous little animals. Um, and I've been really enjoying watching the YouTube videos as well, especially the Friday sews. I always enjoy having a sewing video on in the black background or I enjoy listening to podcasts too. So I just wanted to give Adam a little mention just in case you haven't checked out his YouTube channel yet. And I'll also link his Instagram page down below as well so you can go and check him out. And go and have a look at those gorgeous little teddies that he's been making too. Um, and then I got an email, which I'm sure lots and lots of people got an email from Closet Core Patterns. And they are going to be starting a challenge over on Instagram. There's going to be prizes. And I think they said that they're going to be choosing at random 10 accounts that do this. Um, but the idea behind it is they've got a brand new logo, which I love. It looks very chic. Um, and then a new challenge um, based on their hashtags. What they're finding is with their old hashtags, they're just getting swamped and um, sort of a little bit messy and disorganised. So they would like everybody that has shared any of their patterns um, and used their hashtags before. They'd like us to go back to any of our garments that we've shared that are a closet core pattern garment and change our hashtags. So they want us to change them to hashtag closet core and then the name of the pattern so that they start to come up on the new hashtag. I think they're just trying to be a bit more organised. Um, and then there's going to be, like I said, some prizes every week. Uh, from remembering the email, they said that we're going to choose at random 10 accounts that have used the new hashtag. So it's worth going to your um, Instagram page and start using the new hashtag. So they were saying in the email that you don't have to edit your description, but you can just in the comments include the new hashtag for the pattern that you've used. So if you've sewn up the Elodie dress, then you would put hashtag closet core Elodie. Um, if you've sewn up the Cali, you would just do closet core Cali. Um, and then that will start to show up in the new hashtags that they want to start using over on Instagram. So I just thought I'd let you know about that. And I think there's going to be more um, sort of information over on their Instagram page. They just sent it out to their newsletter subscribers at the moment to let us know all about it. And then the final thing that I wanted to finish with is some sewing plans. So aside from my quilting project, which is going to be ongoing, um, I got some fabric. I've got my So Haley Jane unboxing um, video coming out on Wednesday. But this is a snippet of the fabric that arrived. And I have, this is all I've got left. Um, I have cut out what I decided to sew up using the fabric. 
and I'm really excited about getting this sewn up. I think it's going to be something that I'm going to really enjoy sewing, but also really enjoy making. I'm not going to say any more, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to sew up little bits of this pattern across the week or maybe over the next couple of weeks and have some progress to share with you next week maybe um i got the navy colorway of the fabric that came in the so Haley june box this month and i'm really pleased with it even though it's a fabric that's not my favorite fabric to sew with and then i have dug out i don't know where i've put it actually oh it's here and then what i'm going to spend um some time doing this week is cutting out some of my make nine plans so i talked about using this gorgeous gauze fabric that i got from new craft house and I'm going to turn it into the Anthea blouse. So I've got the pattern out. I've got the fabric. It's been pre-washed. So I'm going to spend some time cutting that out. And then I got lots and lots of suggestions for what to use this gorgeous fabric for. And I think I've settled on using the Nina Lee Bakerloo um, dress pattern for this fabric. I think it would make a really stunning um, Bakerloo dress. So I'm going to cut this out as well, which I'm really excited about. I cannot wait to wear that. And I feel like I need to wear it in the um, colder months. So in the next couple of months, I want to get that cut out so I can start chipping away at sewing that up as well. And then with this fabric, I think I'm sort of 85% sure it's going to become some kind of blouse. So I may end up cutting out the Anthea blouse from this gorgeous fabric too, because I just want to sew this up. It's been sat in my stash for far too long and I'm really excited about turning it into something that I can wear. So I may get that cut out as well. So thank you so much to everybody that's commented on my Make 9 vlog um, where I talked about approaching the, the sort of Make 9 challenge in a different way this year. Instead of using patterns to drive my Make 9 plans, I'm going to be using fabrics that I've had in my stash for ages. And I'm really looking forward to getting going with those plans. So thank you to everybody that's commented on, the, on that video. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've started sewing this week or what I've managed to get finished sewing. Um, some fabric and patterns that I've talked about as well. Um, and some plans moving forward. I'm off to do a little bit more quilting with my scraps. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that pans out over the next couple of weeks. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button, then you'll get notified of when I bring up my next video. My next video is coming out on Wednesday, which is my unboxing of my So Hilly Jane box, which is a gorgeous box this month. Um, and like I said, I've already cut out my fabric and I know what I'm going to be sewing with it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.